Hey everybody, I'm back with another interview. And uh, I know I was talking about earlier about Facebook, but this interview uh, that I'm doing with my good buddy Chris Goodman, who should be popping on here in a second. Uh, if you are a real estate agent, real estate investor, um, or you're in business for yourself, and you are own a small business, you own a large business, I'm going to bring him on now, you need to hear this gentleman speak. Again, he's an outstanding business coach. This is someone that really just takes people to astronomical levels in their business. Um, hi, Jordan. Good to see you. Can't wait to talk to you later. So I'm going to wait for Chris to pop on here. And, and again, um, if you're in real estate, uh, this is something that you'd long time. No see brother. What's what's going on with, uh, AT and T this. Are they not, are they not can working you, well today? Hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. I've got, I've got you. There you are. Okay. The, the screen froze for a second. We're good. All right. How are you? I'm doing great. Long time. No talk. <laughs> I feel like we're like old friends from 20 years ago exactly. as much as we talk. This is great. It's, I love it's, it. it's been a minute. So, you know, obviously the, uh, the roles have been reversed. Um, you know, obviously you gave me the, uh, you know, the opportunity to speak about myself and what I do. And um, aside from you not liking cucumbers, I do want people to, <laughs> uh, I do want people to learn more about Chris Goodman and what you do, and, and obviously being a high-performance coach, uh, a high-performance business coach, and everything that, that you know, um, I just want to turn it to you because, you know, time is money and money is time, and I know you have uh, a, a, a busy schedule, as do I. So, uh, Chris, I'm going to turn it to you. Who is Chris Goodman? What does he do? And what is your vision for the future of you and your business? Awesome. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Yes, you're right. We've got a lot going on. You can see behind me. We are packing for, uh, we're moving to California here in a few weeks. So on top of building two businesses, really three, uh, we're, my fiance and I are both coaches and moving to California and planning a wedding on the other side of the country. Mm. It's been a little, it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so thank you for taking the time to have me on. Um, and I'm excited to, to get to know your market a little better too. And hopefully share a few things today that um, might help them in their journey too, because what I've discovered through my, not just my coaching journey, but my professional journey is that everybody who takes their, their life and whatever business they're in, whether they're working for someone or whether they own their business, if they take it really seriously, they hit these opportunities to grow. And they don't always come at the the perfect moment, right? Like it's not convenient for us to move to California right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. And if we always did what was comfortable for us, we wouldn't really be able to obtain the life or the business of our dreams. So that's in a nutshell, that's really what I've learned how to help people do. I've discovered all kinds of ways uh, through my own coaching and, and my own uh, businesses to help people unlock that potential in those times, whether it's convenient or not. Um, and so without being vague, what that means is I, I help coach people both on the mindset and the practical business side of whatever business they're in, because we've learned that there's really one language that runs through all humanity's mindset issues, right? We're, we're not that unique. Mm. And I know that sounds so weird, but in the way we process fear the way we process problems, and the way we, most importantly, unlock our potential, we're all very similar. So that's what I do on the mindset side, which is critical because if I only coached on the business side, and, and I'm sure you can speak to this with, what, 63,000 hours of coaching you said yesterday? <laughs> A lot, yes. I, I, I love that, man. That is awesome. So we could coach business owners on the practical side all day long, help them boost their profit margins, help them hire more people, help them save time and be more efficient all day long. At the end of the day, if they're not happy when they go home, even worse, if they're not happy and fulfilled and feel free when they're in their business, 
what are we even working yeah. for? Mm. Right. So, um, so I've, I've started to really change my approach with clients to be very thorough and heavy on the mindset at first and make sure they are uh, in a great spot there. And then the business just takes off by extension. So, uh, I feel like you asked me another question about. No, no, um, that, I mean, Chris, that's great because it's it. You know, I call that the top-down approach. Top-down meaning here down, and you know, you can teach someone the most critical and most important uh, business techniques, tactics, uh, and everything that that you need to know. But if they haven't worked through mindset-wise the things that are required to allow them to make that, that leap in life, that leap in business, that leap in their income, then you're still going to be living in that groundhog's day where, yeah, yeah. maybe your, your business sense has changed, but the mindset hasn't. So you're going to fall back on the old habits that have kept you where you don't want to be. So where, so, so just give an example. Uh, you know, you don't have to mention names, but a, an example of a client that came to you and, you know, where they were mindset and business wise before and, and you know, going through your coaching program and, and working with them, uh, w what happened to them when they came out on the other side after working with you? Uh, it's such a great question. Yeah. And I could talk all day about this. So if I get long winded, just shut me down. Right, listen, floor is your brother. <laughs> but, Keep going. The more descriptive right, you are, well, the better picture it can be painted. Perfect. One of my favorite success stories is... Um, a guy named David, I don't think he would mind me using his name. He's the CEO of uh, a business down in Louisiana. And we got started in a consulting relationship. They hired me to come in and help shore up some issues in the sales department because my um, bread and butter for several years was real estate uh, training and sales, recruiting agents, training them, and then helping them become successful. So, so far, I earned rookie of the year my first year, and then I've trained three other rookies of the wow. year in real estate. So we know the approach that I take to sales training specifically in real estate works. And this consulting um, relationship started out of a, let's apply some of those principles to the dental industry and see how we can um, shore up the issues they were having in their sales department. So within the first few weeks, it was clear that it wasn't really as much of a sales issue as we thought. It was a mindset issue. Mm -hmm. Nobody had really taken the time to help prepare the people who were making the calls to understand how best to help these people. Specifically, we, we did work on some scripts and we did walk them through how to handle objections. And I've got a four-step process to handle any objection. And that helped tremendously, but really it was the, the root cause was the mindset. So that turned into a long-term coaching relationship with the CEO, uh, David. And within about 10 or 11 months, we were able to take his company from 1.8 million to 2.8 million. Oof. We hired four, yeah, we've hired four full-time people to the team. We clawed back about 20, 25 hours every week mm. that he was spending in the business that he got to then go home and spend with his kids, play some golf, have some fun, you know. Um, and more importantly, it, it set the stage for their next level of growth where they will be able to double that amount in another year. So, you know, that's why I say it's so important to blend the two, the mindset and the practical side of things, even if you're, you're working on your sales department. Because without that, sure, we could have boosted sales, but to, to what? To have him go home and be miserable still? Um, so, yeah, and another example, uh, one of my recent just newer sign-ons, this guy blows me away within three or, I want to say three to four weeks, he started two businesses both were already profitable by about week eight. Wow. While he has another full-time job and we made time in his calendar every week to make sure he spends with his wife because that didn't exist before. Mm. They were never purposeful about creating time to be purposeful about their relationship. So in all quadrants, this guy is up leveled in just a few weeks and, and continues to blow me away every week when we talk. So it's, um, it's really, it's fascinating because everybody's results differ because everybody comes to coaching with a different ideal outcome, yeah. right? Like not everybody wants to double their business. Some people just want to learn how to handle their emotions. Some people want to learn how to have a much more fulfilling and deep relationship. 
And the way I coach can address any of that. That's fine because I don't have the answers. And you know this from, from personal training and from coaching and from consulting. It's rarely about us having the answer. It's more about drawing it out from that person, right? Yeah, and I think even more than that, what I'm learning, because, you know, when you get into coaching, when you get into, because I love mindset stuff, is that, you know, and I say this to, I use this example. The person has to be ready for a change. You can't force someone that is not ready to lose weight and eat healthy to get into the gym. Because if there is force, if there's resistance, they're going to do whatever they can to unintentionally self-sabotage that because they weren't ready. So as a coach, as a consultant, you have to do your best to meet people where they are and move people along in the speed that they're ready to be. And you, you, it's, it's just like what I said to you last night, not telling and selling and doing more asking and listening, mm -hmm. asking what that person requires. So, so let's talk about both of what you do, which is the mindset and obviously the business skill combined one. Um, what is the biggest um, setback or the biggest mindset um, stumbling block that you find most people have to overcome because uh, over that stumbling block, over that hill of overwhelm and anxiety and disbelief uh, lies pastures of success and abundance what what is the hardest mindset aspect for people to make that climb to get on the other side that you've experienced personally, but also professionally working with your clients? And that's such a good question because I, I think we all deal with this. And when I say we, I mean, entrepreneurs, people in business, and even if they don't own the company, I mean, top performers who, wh whether they're an athlete or they're in business. And it's it's this motion right here to go, I need yeah. help <laughs> asking for help every right. Every single person I coach is an overachiever in their own way. And because of that, part of their identity is I got this. Mm. I will run through this wall. I will run through this obstacle. I will fix this relationship. I will refill the bank account. I will, I will, I will, instead of maybe I shouldn't take it all on myself can someone help? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like their theme song is all by myself. You know, it's, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and then you, you know, the, one of, one of the greatest things that any one person can do is to reach out for help because when you reach out to ask for help, you're asking questions to a problem where you can then get the solution. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think that's spot on. You know, it's, it's really the gesture of asking for help is the symptom of fear. Mm. And they have some sort of deep-seated fear that this means they're bad because they can't do it on their own. They are wrong because they, have, they don't have the results that they want, so they must be doing it wrong. And they're afraid to be cast out into the light as somebody who doesn't have it all together. Mm. And I mean, I even, I spoke with a, a gentleman this morning who I massively and deeply respect and had no clue that anything was amiss and he is really struggling in his business. And, and I think this is just the, the, the current that runs through everybody that gravitates toward coaching of some kind is they know they don't have the results they want and they don't know how to get them. And it's as simple as asking for help to start unlocking those answers, like you said, with the right questions. Now, what, yeah. what do you feel on a professional side? So we talked about like, you know, mindset wise, you know, the, the biggest obstacle is people actually asking for help. What would you say is the biggest personal obstacle that you and, you know, I mean, we, we could say ego and I got this. But on the professional side, what are you seeing as a as a common trait that a lot of the people that you work with, the biggest thing they're struggling with professionally? A lot of times it's confidence. Mm. It's very lonely at the top of an organization and they they know how to put the mask on in front of the employees shareholders, whoever, and they know how to behave as somebody who's happy, but then they go home and they feel completely lost. And all of the confidence that they had at work is gone at home. Mm. So when I say confidence, I mean, I mean, the, the kind of confidence that makes you show up the same way at home and at, at work. 
And the way that I coach helps draw that out and find evidence, because you know this, what we focus on dictates our reality. So if we're focusing constantly on how our business is failing and how we're not doing as well as we want to be and how we are not making as much money as we know we're possible, uh, capable of making, yeah. well, we're going to feel like shit, yeah. right? It's just, that's just, right? It's like if we have laws of physics, we have laws of mindset. And I think that's one of them. So yeah, confidence is one of the biggest pieces because so much is buried in your confidence. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, if you look back at your results, I mean, th think about your last couple of years. You've had a huge couple of years. Mm -hmm. If we tracked on a, a line graph your peak moments of confidence, where were your results at that time? Probably at the highest point of, of what I was achieving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is why we have to start kind of at that. I love how you said that kind of from the bottom up. Is that what you said? Top down. Top down. Top, or down, bottom top up? down. Yeah. 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 Exactly. To start from let's get your head around why you're not confident, attach it back to your heart, the reason you're in business, right? I know we talk about start with why all the time, mm -hmm. but I think it's different too, to live and breathe your why. Ooh. And when you feel confident, you, you, know, you can tell I'm a little passionate about yeah, this, totally. and I know you I are too. It. It, when, when people show up and the veins are bulging and they can't wait to, to get to work and help people, that's when confidence translates to results. And I think you said it beautifully because Les Brown talks about it all the time. And well, first, you know, Les Brown says that other people's opinions and thoughts of you do not have to become your reality. And I love that because we do, mm -hmm. we do externally start to listen to all the chirping and then you start to turn. And am I like that? Am I, am, is, is, is what they're saying really true? And then, um, you know, in the strangest secret by Earl Nightingale, what I love that book states is says that what you focus on most often is what you become. So a lot of it is just making very simple, minute mindset shifts to start having those minute shifts in your business that lead to the massive ones later on down the road. So, you know, when people look at success, they think it's like they go to sleep one day, they wake up the next and there's six million dollars sitting in their bank account. And it's it's called the compounded effect. And it's those small daily actions taken each and every day that real, really amount to the big picture at the end. And I think when people can start to wrap their arms and their heart and their head around all of that, that it is a process. It is going to happen, but it's going to take time and practicing patience, which for every entrepreneur, you know, you and me included, <laughs> patience, oh, yeah. patience is yeah. one of the hardest things to practice because when you visually – start to wrap your, your mind and your heart around everything that you want to do. And you can see it so clear. You can taste it. You can feel it. You eat, you sleep, and you breathe it. Then the patient starts to kick in because you see it. You're like, why is it not happening? But it's still all part of the process. So um, what's the greatest lesson that, that you've learned personally you know, not, not, not on the professional side, on, on mm. the personal side of Chris Goodman, going through everything that you've been through, you know, uh, pre-law and, and doing real estate and all of these stuff um, in, in your life so far, what, 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 what's the greatest lesson that you've learned about life? Oh, <laughs> not a small question. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me come up with a really good answer for that because I, 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 I was teasing my brother the other day. I said, I, I feel like I've li lived nine lives in 10 years. Um, and and if you know anybody who's had a lot of life in a short amount of time, like I, you're right, I, I was in law school, worked at the biggest law firm in town, uh, got into real estate, took off, you know, sold 115 houses, just myself in three years, and then helped the team sell thousands of houses, um, and then started this, this coaching business and, and have taken off in that too. So it's been a wild roller coaster. Yeah. On top of the personal life things of going through, like having my worst fear come through, going through it or come true and going through a divorce. So I, I've learned so much about life. And I, I think at the end of the day, if I can put this into a nutshell, my greatest lesson about it all is that we manufacture almost every single inch of it, mm. right? We, we are, this is the fascinating thing about people in business, particularly, we love to control things. That's why we create our own business because we don't want to be under somebody else's thumb and we want to be able to control it. However, when you turn the lasers around back on themselves, they don't often want to learn how to control their mind, their thoughts, their emotions, 
which ultimately we know create our results. Mm. So over the last, specifically over the last two years, I have worked really hard to figure out how does each individual person create their reality? Like what framework do they build and what lens do they see that framework mm. through? Because if we're going to influence somebody, we have to deeply understand what influences them. So it's not, it's not enough for me to get up and train a room full of people and say, here's what you got to do, guys, right. A, B, C, right? To really create some sort of shift, a transformation in their life or business, we've got to get in there and understand that framework and reverse engineer it to where it actually serves us. And, and I've had to do that. Trust me. I mean, I, last night we sat out on the deck and I was like, man, maybe I'm not asking for enough help because every time I do ask for help, I get results like that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I still have to do the work too. So I think it's something where I love how you mentioned that earlier, that it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's, it's been a two year long process for me to really deeply grab that and run with it and then learn how to translate it to somebody else. Um, and also continue to do that work myself. So what would you also say in the, in, in the same voice, um, has been the greatest personal obstacle that you've had to overcome in these nine lives in 10 years? Mm. Easily my divorce. Um, my, my, you know, everybody's got a story and mine is a 30 year long story that I'll put in the CNN edition. <laughs> <laughs> the, the CNN edition is when I was uh, 14, I found out accidentally that my dad was having an affair uh, my parents had been married for 28 years, uh, 25 years, I think, at that point. And so I discovered this and was just I, I carried this burden for months of how do I deal with this? What am I supposed to do? It's going to destroy the family. And, you know, when you're young, especially you're so impressionable and vulnerable. And it just it really threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. Well, so that was one thing. Then I watched my siblings go through the exact same thing that that's hard to watch somebody else go through what you just had as a heartbreaking experience. Right. So my greatest fear that I, I carried around forever was God, this just can't happen to me. Right. Like I'll never let this happen to me because I've seen it destroy families. I've seen it destroy the most confident people and just rip everything apart. So naturally what you focus on expands. Right. Spoke, so I carry this seed around spoke and think it about into it existence. And I did. I, I dated uh, my ex-wife for, I think, five years before we got married to make sure because I was going to be that guy that didn't have this happen, yeah. right? Well, f for a lot of reasons, that's exactly what happened. And it was crushing at the time, man. It was absolutely – you talk about just completely hitting the nuclear button on something. It was like – I remember finding out and just – feeling like a percussion grenade went mm. off and, you know, ears ringing and body shaking and just not like if you've ever experienced genuine disbelief, like you're, you feel like your mind is detached. Yeah. And that's what I felt like. Just like nothing was real because if this, if this was true, then what else could be true? Right? Mm. Like everything just flipped upside down for a few minutes. Uh, and that's part of the reason that I'm so, passionate about coaching because I was in a coaching program at the time and I continued to, to stay in different types of coaching programs that specifically drilled down on mindset and helped you control your emotions. And I honestly think without that, I would have been even more of a train wreck. So what, what I learned through that saga over probably six months, right, was how to keep myself in check and how to keep my business results growing like that the week i found out about the affair uh my personal affair wait i rephrase let me rephrase that my ex-wife's personal affair but with my marriage right but the, the week i found out i went out and sold six or seven houses mm. because i could keep it in check yeah for the most part now don't get me wrong i was kind of a train wreck i yeah. moved out of my house in two days and into my brother's basement and the whole thing right? you're, you're a human being and Exactly. And, and I think for people who are able to tell their story and, uh, and share it with the world, there's a sense of it was so long ago emotionally and, and in how we have grown from it that we almost sound kind of like, yeah, it happened. It was, it was awful. And then we moved on. Yeah. But for anybody who's in the middle of that, 
it's all you can think about, right? It's all you can think about. Yeah. And um, so, so part of what I love to do is help people get control of that um, awareness of their own power in those dark times, whether it's in business, because we have those moments at business too, right? Team walks out, business partner screws you, uh, whatever happens, we have these moments in business as well. So yeah, I think it was the defining moment of you want to be a badass, you want to be a great businessman, you want to be a great husband, prove it. Yeah. And there it was. So and then the way that I rebuilt my mind, my heart, my business, the way I rebuilt all those things allowed me to attract my now fiance, mm. who's also an amazing coach. And um, without having learned those lessons, I wouldn't be the same, same man I am for her. I, I love that. And I can completely relate. I mean, I, I went through two divorces myself. And uh, because of all the personal development and the realizing that I'm in control of my emotions and my reactions or my non reactions, I attracted my fiance into my life, who's an outstanding coach herself, an entrepreneur. And, you know, something that and it's funny, like, I, I have to hear other people's stories um, to have it uh, come up to me. So similar, um, you know, my, my father uh, left my mother after 31 years of marriage. And, oh, wow. and it was, and, and I share that because, you know, I was, uh, you know, I, I was 30 and my sister was 27 and we were, the, you know, we were adults going through divorce, but, you know, both of us were married at that time. And then, um, you know, Prior to my, my parents splitting up, um, just to give you the timeline, my sister and her uh, now ex-husband, she's remarried now, uh, they split up in September of, of, 20, uh, of 2008, and then mm -hmm. I split, uh, myself and my first wife, we split in November of 2008. And then my parents split up in February of 2009. So in a wow. six month, in a six month period, my sister, myself, and my parents all got divorced. So, and, and it was, it was a lonely and, and, you know, obviously we've all done a lot of work. Both of my parents are, are back in healthy relationships. My sister is remarried uh, with uh, a beautiful daughter with one on the way. And, uh, you know, I, myself, you know, Nancy and I are getting married later this year. So again, you know, we have full control um, of our lives. And, and, you know, one, I just appreciate your vulnerability and your transparency because hmm. that's what makes a great coach. When I, I truly believe, and I said this to someone the other day, that the, the best coaches aren't the ones that necessarily have the best certifications uh, because the, the letters next to your name don't really make you better or worse than anyone else. I always tell people the best coaches are the ones that coach based off of their own life experience, because when you go through it and you come out on the other side, that qualifies you and certifies you to then help other people that are in the same, um, similar or somewhat uh, of the same kind of situation. So um, I just got to give kudos to you. And, um, and I know that we're coming towards the end of this. So there's a couple of the things that I want to discuss very quickly. Sure. Um, yeah. So number, yeah, thank you. Number, number one, obviously, I want everyone to connect with you. So, so and I know that you have a, a, just an incredible, incredible coaching program. And um, you have very, very limited spots open in your coaching practice. And you do have still a few spots open right now. So uh, obviously, you are looking to onboard some new clients. So uh, for those that are on here live, and then that will be here on the replay, um, how can they find out about Chris Goodman? Where can they go to find out? Um, and how can they connect with you? Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, the at Goodman Coaching. So that's the easiest way to track me down. And then my website is going to have everything else there. Goodman Coaching. You know, slide this over. It looks like that. Goodman Coaching Inc. Inc. dot com. Um, and we can drop that in the comments here in a second. So you got a link to go yep. to. But yeah, you know, the the other thing is there is a there's an alignment of, I always do this because, you know, I could, I could coach just about anybody at this point. I'm, I'm that confident, but for the wrong candidate, 
what's the matter? Like you said, somebody has to want coaching. Yeah. So we're very careful in the very beginning to make sure, is this a right fit? And the way we do that starts with an application. So when you go to goodmancoachinginc.com, scroll down, there's an application. And then we walk through it step by step to make sure that everything is in alignment before we talk about getting into a coaching relationship or which program is best for you. Or I can't tell you how many people I've referred to other programs because I know I'm not their guy. Um, you know, I, I have, I'm very passionate about what I do mm -hmm. and I go very fast. And if, even if somebody isn't my proper speed or temperature, I'll tell them, look, here's somebody who's a little cooler and more slower paced. That's a right fit for you. I love that. Um, so it's that simple. And yeah, I, I do have two spots open right now, uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching specifically. So I would love to get, just fill those this week and make sure we've got the right people on board. They get access to all kinds of things once they become one-on-one, -on -one, uh, clients. So I'll, you know, spare that for another time since we're running out of time. But um, yeah, everything in my business, I work to keep really simple. Um, and that application has been probably the one thing that has made it very clear whether somebody is simply a fit or simply not a fit. Yeah. I, and, and again, um, you know, qualifying and vetting people out that, that are ready and that are not ready is, a, is such an important onboarding process. So final question before we end, there's no wrong answer, but I love asking people this question. And uh, Chris Goodman, what does success mean to you? I think if I looked at all the key areas of my life and everything was at a nine out of 10, that's what success would look like. So if my relationship, if I feel like at any given time, my relationship is at a nine out of 10, my income, my relationships with other people, my personal growth, my spirituality, uh, my fitness and health, if all those categories are at any time about a nine out of 10, that's what success looks like. And, and it's all individual. So for me, that, that would require me giving a lot of my knowledge, my, my life experience, like we've talked about, and my coaching experience to a lot of people to help them ideally avoid some of the pain I've experienced and be able to grow their life, their business, their income, whatever, um, to a point where they feel so passionate, so profitable, and ultimately free enough that they could say, yeah, my key areas are a nine out of 10 also. I love it. Being perfectly imperfect. And, and that's, uh, and that's the way that you should live every aspect of your life. And I see Deb and Jordan tagging people in here that need to hear this. So, uh, again, you know, I just want to stress to you guys that are on here on the live or on the replay, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those coaches that if you decide to pull the trigger and he's only got two spots left, um, he is a game changer and he's a, he is a, he's a person that will take you, uh, from that valley that you may be in and climb that peak and basically get to the promised land of where you want to be, you know, mindset and professionally. So Chris Goodman, you know, just grateful for you, brother, and the friendship that you and I are developing and just excited to, to hear and see all the things that you're doing. So thank you so much for sharing your time, sharing yeah. your heart, sharing your vulnerability with my audience. And uh, again, I just want to wish you continued success and, and looking forward to more things in the future for the both of us. Same to you, man. Thank you so much. And I'm sure I'll talk to you real soon. Right? Uh, absolutely, brother. <laughs> I appreciate you and uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. You too. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Take Chris. Bye-bye. So as you guys can see, you know, this is a game changer. Um, you know, I, I feel so blessed to be connected to some of the most amazing human beings now being a part of the mastermind that I'm in. And uh, again, Chris Goodman, he's got two spots left. And uh, if you are ready for the mindset and business change that you deserve, whether you work for someone or whether you work with, um, with yourself and you own your own business, um, you deserve to reach out to Chris. Uh, so after this is done, he's going to leave his website in here. So please connect with him. Send him a friend request on Facebook. Talk to him. And, um, and obviously, he can help you take things to the next level. So guys, please enjoy the rest of your Friday. Uh, my amazing friend Jordan Lewis, who's on her right now, will be interviewing me in a couple hours, so stay tuned for that, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye, everybody.